Okay, here we are. The intersection of Lawrence and Broadway, uptown. Check it out, Green Mill is a few doors down. Uptown and the Riviera Theater. Okay, it was open in August 18, 1925. It's another wrap and wrap design. The years of significance were 1925 through 1949. And this is a Balaban and Katz theater. The style is Tudor Revival, Mission, Spanish Revival. I haven't, uh, this is another one of those theaters that is on the list for rehabilitation. It's taken a few years. There hasn't been a show here since 1981. It was bought in uh, for 3.2 million in uh, 2008. Current owner is uh, Jerry uh, Mickelson, who's part of the Jam Productions. But this was another movie house. Vaudeville shows, I imagine, vaudevilles and, and motion pictures. And. Uh, you would have seen your motion, motion pictures, and this would have, of course, had your typical organ and your uh, Wurlitzer organ at this uh, theater as well. Even though it's boarded up, the interior is still ornate. Everything is still pretty much there. And there was a $75 million uh, dollar, uh, campaign to restore and reopen it. And it was supposed to start in 2019, but it uh, it, that didn't happen and then corona came coronavirus and and here we are still but I believe there's still plans to uh, refurbish it seating capacity is 4300 and for the uh, rehabilitation they were planning to open it back up with more seats and I've read anything from 5600 to 5800 uh, seats now this was the largest freestanding theater at the time when it was built. And in the country, it was actually number 12 largest in the country. Now during, as I said, the 70s and 80s, you have your period again where you have the downfall and things, uh, society, uh, urban renewal, blight kind of thing. You know, so a lot of these theaters, they kind of went down a little bit. So. In 1975, seems to be a lot of ambulances rolling through here. The Lady Who Lied by First National Pictures would have been the first, first uh, motion picture that came through here. With stars Louis Stone and Virginia Valley. Plus there was a live stage show at the time. It was called Under the Spanish Skies. There was a 60-person orchestra at the time. Remember, Tivoli Theater only set 55 people in their orchestra pit. And Jesse Crawford was the organist. Opening day. Jesse Crawford. You can go online right now and find Jesse Crawford, 78. You can look at the stones on there on the side. They're almost like the Paragon brick pattern, very similar, but the roof was actually taller than this. It's really ornate, but that's taken down during the construction. The plan was to actually uh, restore it, almost back to its uh, back to its original look, with that sign there, that vertical sign included. I hope they get it done. But take a look. Riviera Theater is right down the street. That's where we're headed. Closeness of these theaters, trilogy of theaters, Aragon Ballroom, the Uptown Theater, which is tr trying to be restored, and the Riviera Theater, Jam Collective, presents Corey Wong, Victor Wooten, Tr Truesdale, March 3rd, 7.30 p.m. This theater was born in the jazz age. It's older than the other theaters 
was completed in 1918. It was supposed to be completed in a year earlier, but World War I postponed the opening with a 2,500 capacity theater. It was built for a little over half a million, believe it or not. French Renaissance revival style. And originally, this was to be assigned to Jones, Lennox, Schaefer, Vaudeville, and uh, movie circuit. But instead it went to the famous, or, or the becoming famous at this time, Balaban and Cats. They had a lot of success with their Central Park Theater on the west side, on Roosevelt, 3535 West Roosevelt. That is now considered Chicago's first movie palace house, even though the outside doesn't look like it. This is an early movie house as well. And the Riviera, this was actually marketed to wealthier uh, middle class people. It had a uh, child playroom, medical station, and this or and a live orchestra pit as well. And its first movie was A Woman of Impulse with Lena Cavalieri. That was the first feature film. And this wasn't majorly affected with the opening of the uh, Riviera Theater down the street there. Not at all. You would have had groups play here more recently. Uh, and it turned over as well, just like the other Aragon Ballroom in 1975. They started hosting concerts. You had uh, Miley Cyrus actually opening her uh, Eight City limited tour here. And uh, tickets sold out in minutes. Smashing Pumpkins, Beastie Boys, Foo Fighters, Adele, Jody Wadley. She, uh, her Larger Than Life tour was uh, here. Got some photos from here on out. Now, when uh, Miley Cyrus was performing here, she was giving an eight-city tour, and this was her opening tour venue. The tickets sold out in minutes. Now, when the... Uh, back to Balaban and Cats between the Central Park Theater and this early Riviera Theater, that made the uh, Balaban and Cats chain uh, very uh, popular in Chicago. And they went on from here to do the famous Chicago Theater downtown on State Street, State and Lake, which we'll probably do at a later date. Balaban and Cats introduce new ideas into their theaters and along with the uh for instance the daycare they also had um the uh what do you call them the ushers were in sort of military regalia they saluted the patrons when they came in and um marched them right to their seats very orderly. Um, we don't do anything like that anymore. It's just grab whatever seat you can or uh, there is a reservation, but you're pretty much uh, going to the seats yourself these days. But in any case, this has been another episode of Derek Bounds Music Vlog. Thanks for watching.